Hello everyone and welcome to a very special edition of Jan's opening clinic. In this one we do not do the normal stuff that you guys ask me questions about chess openings and I try to answer. But we, and by we I mean myself, shall try to give an update regarding the state of things in the four, four part Black Repertoire series that I published on what to do against 1d4. I received a bunch of very good questions concerning that repertoire and before we get into them let me give a brief State of the Union address as for how I feel things are. You can say I'm struggling putting together English works, English words, but that normally gets a little better once I'm like five minutes in talking. However, sometimes it just stays that way. Let's bring up a board to distract us and see what we're talking about. So I've done a bunch of series against 1d4. The first part concerned the Catalan defense. After g3 I recommended bishop e7 and playing the main lines. Since this is the first part and it's been a while since I published that series, Bunch of things have happened and I believe the questions that we will address later do a very good job of pointing towards these recent developments. My general feeling is of course theory has to be updated because there have been games at the highest level and some lines that yeah did not exist at the time I was doing my series or that I missed but I still have complete faith in this line being absolutely playable. The second part of my series I have to be honest, I have a little less faith in, and I always add, it is after knight c3, the Vienna. I still enjoy the Vienna because of its forcing nature, and that's also why I chose it for the series. The one soft spot, I believe the soft spot of the entire series, is this pawn sacrifice bishop takes c4. I knew this at the time I was doing that, and there are a lot of very relevant questions in the comment section that I will address about the position after knight takes e4 short castles. This is scary. I've pointed it out in the video series and it still is scary. Everything else I'm still very happy with in the Vienna but bishop c4, knight e4 we will have to go into more detail later. It's a scary spot. For those of you who are too scared by this I don't blame you. I still think it's a very viable option to stick to big parts of that Vienna repertoire and play bishop to b4, intending to meet bishop g5 with d takes c4. When after e4 we transpose to the Vienna after c5, but we avoided that pawn sacrifice. Of course that requires us to know something about the Ragozin, which is what I always try to avoid. We have a question about that later too, after c d e d bishop g5 or queen a4 check. But th should things get even worse or even scarier, in this knight c3, dc, e4, bishop b4, bishop c4, pawn sec. Then we might have to switch here. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll have a bunch of bishop takes c4 discussions later. The third part of the series, by the way, you can find all of those series on chess24.com. Click on wherever you click on learn and you shall find them. They are included in the premium membership, which costs, I don't even know what it costs, $9.99 per month and you get access to all these series and tons of other stuff. The third part is dedicated to the Nimzo Indian. This is still relatively recent. So, um, I am not aware of any problems with it. I still stand by pretty much everything I said. I'm not even aware, but that's partly ignorance of um, that many new developments. We have a bunch of questions about the Nimzo which we will get into but as far as I know everything is still all right and of course the Nimzo Indian is an opening that will never get in trouble. It's so solid and black has so many options. There will be the occasional updates to be done here or there but in general everything is fine from where I'm sitting. Then I recently did the last part which addresses all the sidelines, bishop f4, knight c3, bishop g5 and so on. Since I just did it, I obviously believe that everything is fine there as well. We, I'm sure we'll have a bunch of questions about it, but generally, yeah. Those are sidelines for a reason, even though the London is very, very popular. I believe black is fine following my advice. 
So after that very confusing introduction, let us get to the questions. Is this the first question? I'm not sure it is. Let's start at the bottom, Drake style. As you can see, there's some questions. Mm. As Sky Savan one not a premium member, he's still happy to see us coming up. Go premium, ask your own question, Sky. Snosko Borowski, Fide Master, is saying, fantastic series. I'm telling all my chess friends to become premium members just for this one alone. Great job. Thank you so much, Snosko Borowski. Now for the question. I know it's not part of the repertoire, and in one of the videos you mentioned, you may do a follow-up on Knight of 3 C4 systems in the distant future. I did mention it. I should stop talking. But if you could just give some hint for a direction against the Reiti, so I don't have to sit there and hope for 64 just to fall into despair after 6b3. That would really help. Thanks. I do know what you're talking about. Um, so Knight F3, Knight F6. I'm not sure which move order we're talking, but let's say this one. E6, G3, D5, Bishop G2, Bishop E7, castles, castles, and b3 instead of d4 after which d takes c4 transposes to the catalan this is a line that's becoming or it's been quite popular for a while ever since robin van kampen beat Wojtaszek in it and yeah um <laughs> should probably show you guys a board good news that we get this out of the way quickly and yeah this line after 6b3 instead of d4 Mm. which transposes to the Catalan, is a tricky little line. I used to think that c5 equalized without any problems, bishop b2, knight c6, but nowadays it has its own body of theory after cd5, knight d5, d4, takes, takes. Black has to know quite some things to equalize, and I'm not sure how happy I am with that here after bishop d7. Both knight c3 and knight a3 are asking some sort of questions. So... My current thinking, and should I ever get around to doing a series or doing this in more detail, it might change. But my current thinking is that it's not worth the trouble from Black's point of view. And after b3, one should go b6, bishop b2, bishop b7, let's say cd, that's what they normally do, knight d5, d4, and here c5. And Black should equalize with less trouble than in the other lines, since his bishop is already on the long diagonal. Of course, there's more details to know, but in general I feel that b3, b6 is not a reason to avoid that repertoire. As for move orders and for what to do against the Reiti in general, I'm not sure. Currently, if I was black, I would probably go d5 and after g3 play g6, which is outside of the repertoire that we covered in the d4 video series, but I believe this is a decent antidote to the Reiti, where the only critical lines are really transposing to some sort of symmetrical Grunfeld. And this has never been considered to be all that dangerous for black to begin with. While the other lines, where white doesn't go d4, but goes c4, we take. I've always been quite happy with from the black side of the board. Our bishop g7, castles, and e5, I would think is playable. But, of course, it is more consistent with our repertoire to play this when... After c4 and b3, we get what you just mentioned. Well, there's also the option of playing d3 and some sort of King's Indian attack. But here, I think black has always been fine. Just follow what Kayakin is doing and you'll be in decent shape. So I hope that addresses your question. As for if I'll do video series on that, who knows? But I'll keep it in mind for sure. Let's get to another question. Sorry, I'll get used to this clicking and I will make sure we have boards on the screen whenever we need one from here on. Not sure that's true. Hmm. Germanicolus is saying, Dear Jan, your love of openings has been contagious. It's not love of openings, it's fear of having to play over the board. I used to think studying them has nothing to do with real chess, but now I love working on a fitting repertoire. Glad to hear that. Hmm. So remember the lines I use an opening tool, chess position trainer, and it really helps. I wondered why you've never mentioned such a tool. 
I mention it because I have no idea what that is. I can't imagine the world's top players do not use these tools, but it seems you never liked it. Do you or the top players you worked with use one or how do you keep up with it all? Um, no, no idea. I don't know what that is. In general, yeah. Normally you just, if you have your files with your analysis and you just click through them if you feel they might happen in a game. Sometimes if you have a little more time or if you have the luxury of a second, then you try to put it up on a real chessboard and your second is sitting on a computer and might ask you to make moves on the board so you can remember it easier. But I'm not aware of chess position trainer or any tools. Um, he's saying, anyway, the six bishop takes c4 variation in the Vienna mainline as well as sidelines gives me the most headaches in practical play. I do agree, as I mentioned in the intro. I heard seven knight of six would be an interesting alternative where the chances of getting checkmated are a bit lower and black can play against the isolated pawn if his opponent messes up. A viable option. And... Um, yeah, I do believe it's a viable option. It's not a lock to solve all the problems, but it is an alternative for sure, which I think I also pointed out in the videos. My problem is I normally forget whatever I said in the videos, so don't quote me on what I recall to have said. Anyway, we're talking about this position where knight takes c3 is the main line that I gave, and knight to f knight to f6 is an alternative I was very surprised that recently Karana played bishop g5 against Elyanov. Won the game, but I don't think that's a critical move. Instead, the line that was always supposed to be critical is queen a4 check, knight to c6, and now bishop to g5. This is very dangerous, with all kinds of d5s looming. Black, as far as I know, has to take on c3, and now castle play this position, where he's a pawn up. It's White has full compensation, there's no question about that, but it's not clear how bad black's position is. The plan, <laughs> I'm not making a great case. Now the plan is to play knight e7, b6, bishop b7, get the pieces out. Normally bishop f6, g f6 does not do great damage to you. So it's playable, but you have to be aware that you have to defend for a while. White with a space advantage and his very powerful two bishops does have full compensation for the pawn for sure. So it's sort of a choose your poison situation, but I don't think this is a bad line. You can either start with knight e7 or start with h6, bishop h4, and now knight e7. Problem with throwing in h6 is that bishop f6 sometimes gains a bit in strength. So I'm leaning towards starting with knight to e7. And this, these are sample lines. White has many moves, that's why it's hard to analyze. Bishop d3, knight e5, queen c2, rook a d1. You could also do without rook f e1, but a position like this is not unlikely to happen. You have to be very alert that you don't get checkmated with some d5 trickery. So you have to be very, very careful. But it is not exactly unplayable. It's really more of a pick your poison type of situation. You hear from the tone of my voice, I'm not too thrilled about either of these lines. So I would probably still stick to my main line over knight f6. I mean, the knight takes c3, followed by bishop takes c3. But it is a choice that black has to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope that made sense. Let's get to another question. Captain Coca-Cola says, Hello, Mr. Gustafsson. Hello, Mr. Coca. Thank you for your video series. I haven't seen every single video yet. How dare you? But I don't think that you covered d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, queen, c2. Thank you. Thanks for your work. Thank you. And I do think that you're right. That move I did not cover. Frankly, it never occurred to me. But it's not a bad move. So let's have a brief look at it. Sorry, I always have to go back to the initial position here in my little file. Knight f3, d5, and queen c2 in this position. This move is quite common if black has already committed to c6, but here we can try to do without c6. The reply, I would guess, depends a little on your typical repertoire. Queen's gambit declined players would probably choose bishop e7. You could make a case for trying to simplify with c5, dc, bishop c5, cd, bishop b4 check. But the reply that I like best, and that is most in the spirit of our repertoire, is to just take on c4. Here, trying to exploit the fact that we don't have a pawn on c6 yet. So we want to prepare c5 in the future. 
After d c4, it looks to me like queen takes c4 must be the intention, since white played queen to c2. And here, I couldn't decide if a6 or knight bd7, but I believe knight bd7 is even more flexible. When black wants to play c5, b6, bishop b7, or a6, b5, and put the bishop on b7, man, I could not see any trouble, really. If white goes g3, Catalan style, then we can play a6, intending to push both these pawns. White plays knight c3, we can also play a6, and we get a pretty good version of some Vienna positions where we had not, have not played the move c6, so we can go b5, c5 in one go. So as far as I can tell, d takes c4 is the easiest solution to all the problems in that line. It's a bit similar to the Vienna with knight c3, d c4, queen a4 check. Here I gave c6 in the series and not knight bd7, because after knight bd7, white would go e4. He would not take on c4. Therefore, this is a little more critical, but if white starts with queen c2, dc, here I don't think e4 makes a whole lot of sense because we can just go b5. Therefore, queen c2, d takes c4. Seems pretty good to me. Who's next? Intermove is asking, ya, hi, hi, Jan. What do you think of the triangle system against the d4 setup? And do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? This type of leading question always makes me very suspicious. That the notobomb is a good and sharp opening for black. How do you evaluate that opening? Thanks. And I'm not an expert and it's a little outside the scope of our repertoire. But I'll give you a brief answer. I believe that Sopiko Guramishvili has a video series on the triangle on chess24. So you should probably check that out. As for me, I do not know what the state of the notobomb is. The notobomb is this line, whatever, e3, b5, a4, bishop b4, bishop d2, a5, I believe it goes. Last time I checked, I thought white was a little better in the main lines here after b3, followed by b takes c4. But I have not spent a lot of time in this territory. I do agree that it's an unbalanced position. So that's interesting. For me, from a practical perspective, the main problem with the triangle was always that white is not really forced to go knight c3 here. In this position, queen c2 makes a lot more sense, for example, than in the position we just saw with knight f6 instead of pawn on c6. e3 is a move, knight bd2 is a move, and the list continues. So I always thought, yeah, committing to c6 so early, if I'm not even guaranteed to get a sharp position, I'm not sure what the upside is. And there is also of course, the white option of playing this martial gambit with 4e4, which is very scary from both sides of the board. It's an interesting line. Um, yeah, I haven't been doing it much, but check out Sopico series for more detail and knowledge than I could possibly give you here. Mm -hmm. Mr. Galactic says, Hi Jan, I follow some of your repertoire, but I play a different move order. d4, e6, knight f3, knight f6, because I play the bogo. I'm sorry to hear that. However, I'm not sure what to do against 3 bishop g5, since I don't want to play 3 d5, which might transpose to the queen's gambit declined if white plays 4 c4. What solid system do you recommend for black then? Thank you a lot. Sorry, Galactic, you can't have everything. You decide not to follow our repertoire, which after d4, knight f6, knight f3 would be d5. And here bishop g5 really is no problem whatsoever because of bishop g5, because you want to play the Bogo Indian, and yeah, that's your choice. But then you have to live with the consequences. And if you start with e6, it does mean that bishop g5 is a much stronger option than against 2d5. And I've always tried to avoid all these systems after 2e6. With e3 is a stronger move here, bishop g5 is a stronger move here. Bishop f4, the case is less clear because you could probably still transpose into our repertoire with d5 and c5. But yeah, bishop g5, I can't help you there. I don't know. I never liked this much from the black side. Um, also, don't quote me on the move order. I think they do something like c5, e3, whatever, take, take, bishop e7. I don't even know. As you can see, I've never really looked at this stuff. Hmm. I think they don't take. <laughs> yeah, this is excellent advice. You can see, I don't have a clue. 
you get something like this, I would guess. Now they used to take play knight c6, tending to play knight d5, something like that. I think it's not supposed to be terrible for black, but that's the best I got. You should join the dark side. Depend on the bogo. What upside does the bogo have? Play d5. Um, hope that helped. Probably didn't though. Hmm. Cardassi is saying, hello Sir Gustafsons. There's one basic thing I've never understood about d4 openings. Why is it that after d4, d5, c4, followed by normal moves, when theory almost never covers, this theory almost never covers the move c4, c5 for white? For example, d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, bishop e7, 5, c5. Why, what is so bad about c5 in these positions and why do good players never play this? How do I punish this as black? It's not a ridiculous question. It's a little outside the realm of our repertoire once again, but I'll briefly address it. Oh yeah, it doesn't seem to stray that far. Bishop g5, bishop e7, and here c5. Normally, yeah, white only does this in specific circumstances. You do it a lot in, let's say, The a6 slav, where black is committed to a6, here c5 is one of the main lines because it's much harder to play b6 without weakening your pawn chain. And you do it in positions after, oops, let's say, this move order. After black is committed to knight bd7, here c5 is also one of the main lines. Generally, the idea of c5 is perfectly reasonable. You want to grab space on the queen side and yeah, just occupy more territory than the opponent. I believe in this particular position you mentioned, it might be a little early. After b6, if you have to take here, you're worse than black just recaptures towards the center and has better structure. So you have to try to defend your pawn chain. And here it feels like white might not be well enough developed to keep it all together. Like my computer, I think, gives bishop d7, then intending to jump to c6, attacking this pawn. There's some quick castles and e5 as well. So it very much depends on timing, as many things in chess. The idea in itself, I agree, it's not ridiculous, or it makes some sense strategically, but you have to be very sure that you have enough time to release the tension in the center for no particular gain, just trying to grab space. That black can't fight against this. Typical breaks are b6 and e5, and here I have a feeling black would probably be doing quite well. However, it's not, it's not a ridiculous move strategically. I will give you that. But normally white needs a little better circumstances than this to do it. <laughs> Bokonon goes to explain this is the tariff variation. That is not true. And some discussion about that, apparently. Chess Tim FM says, Dear Jan, please ignore the good FM's question, as I need people to be as clueless as possible when I play the Reiti, or else I just get crushed by good players, such as the FM who asked the question. You're a busy man, Jan. No need to answer every question. Uh, I think I did a pretty good job of not really answering that question. So yeah, best of luck, Chess Tim FM, with your ratey studies in the future. Mm, and in general, my repertoire, I'll be honest, I think it's a good and solid repertoire that will help you solve your problems against 1d4, but normally it's very hard to crush, crush main lines. The ratey, you're technically not a main line, but it's getting there. It's solid enough that I don't think you would get crushed even if I did more content about it. Superfishy24 is saying, Hi Jan, what is your recommendation against 11 bishop f4 in the Vienna line? Yeah, the pawn sacrifice main line. Also, what do you think about Nihail Sarin's move 17 c6 in his game against Blue Bomb instead of 17 bishop d7? Which was your recommendation in the same line of the Vienna? Oof, here comes the deep water already. Let's first try to get to the positions that Superfishy is mentioning. Yeah, as I've mentioned, this is the softest spot or the most dangerous line. I'm not even sure. I should stop calling it a soft spot. I'm not sure it's bad or anything. 
just more dangerous than the other positions we're getting, that's for sure. And yeah, this is the line. We've talked about knight f6 in a previous question. Knight takes c3, b takes c3, bishop to e7, knight e5, castles, queen g4, knight c6. Bishop f4 is a recent trend, I believe. Laurent Fresinet had a game with this. Rook to e1 is the main line. Many games here. Bishop f4, a bit fresher. No pun intended. And not a bad move. I let my computer run a bit here, and the computer does say there is nothing better than knight takes e5, and the white idea is to play d takes e5, bishop e5, just bishop f6, black is better, but d takes e5, here apparently we don't have time to wait for the white attack to develop further, and we should give the pawn back immediately with f5. e takes f6, bishop takes f6, now this is hanging, there was a Wojtaszek game where this pawn was taken off the board, takes, takes, queen e6, and I think you played rook f7, made a draw without any particular problems. Black king is a little weaker, white queen side is a little weaker, this should be about equal. The computer, instead of bishop takes e6, was spitting out some other moves, like queen to g3 was his main line, targeting this dude, rook f7, rook a1, queen e7, and something like rook e4, with compensation. I don't think it's terrible for black, but it's an interesting position to analyze further. I believe if you yeah, keep going deeper here, it will eventually peter out to a draw. But I could not find anything better than returning the pawn with knight takes e5 followed by f5. And yeah, we have to give the pawn back and make a draw. But yeah, this is one serious attempt at black's life. Since I believe someone else asked something about this line later, I will give you the other question as well. Mm, after bishop f4, this is a line, the other main line, with rook e1 instead of bishop f4. f5, queen f3, knight takes e5, rook takes e5, king to h8. Unfortunately, it's necessary, because f5 is saying. Bishop f4, g5. As usual, I can't remember, but I believe... No, I shouldn't. Mm, spoil all my series. You guys should have some reason to go premium and look it up yourself. g5, bishop g d2, bishop d6. Rook a e1, bishop e5, rook e5 here. I recommend a bishop d7. I think probably after I gave this, there was a game with c6. However, if you let your computer run long enough here, at least my computer spits out that c6 is a little slow and white gets a very serious initiative after queen h5, rook g8, g4. Don't ask me why. I'm just quoting here. Don't kill the messenger. Takes, takes, g takes, f5. And this position seems to be quite dangerous for black, according to my machine. So, my machine still claims bishop d7 is best, and black equalizes at the very least. Weird position, though. As all these positions, they are a little scary. <laughs> Fire 909. Is saying, hi Jan, I'm not a Nimzo player, but your series has helped me a bit for the white point of view. Um, yeah, not the intention, but thanks anyway. Really good job, as I agree with pretty much everything in your series. Wherever I get to learning a new opening for black, or whenever, it will definitely be the Nimzo. You have convinced me that Nimzo is one of the two best openings against 1d4. Um, yeah, all right. <clears throat> anyway, my actual question is about the Trompovsky. In the videos, you never mentioned this line. d4, knight f6, bishop g5, d5, bishop f6, g, f, e3, c5, c3. This is actually won some games for white, and I'm wondering what black should do here. If you do have enough time, second question, bishop f4, g6, knight c3, d5, e3, bishop g7, h4. There I have no clue, because yeah, this g6 is very much outside my scope of having a clue. But the first one... I can answer in the Trompovsky. d5, bishop f6, g f, e3, c5, c3. I think I did address this in the videos though. Or maybe it was via knight f3, knight c6, c3, something like this. It looks very familiar. And long story short, this is a ridiculous line for white. Who plays like this? You give up the two bishops, you give up the center, and you expect good things to happen to you? Why? You don't deserve any good things to happen to you after e5 or knight c6 followed by e5. But I like just grabbing it with e5. Black is better already, in my opinion. 
So I do not see a single reason for playing this position with white. You go knight c6, queen b6, bishop e6. Um, what's not to like? I've seen there were some games, but I don't understand it at all, honestly. Just play e5, develop the knight. Enjoy life. Not afraid of this line. Grandmaster Passion, regarding the Catalan series, how do you propose Black improves on the game? So Nakamura, Sinkfield, 2016, starting with 11 Queen D2 and Vallejo Hare Krishna, Moscow Grand Prix, 2017 with 11 B3. Um, I believe someone else asked about 11 Queen D2, so yeah, <clears throat> we'll get to that one later. But let me do my homework, your homework for you. Grandmaster Passion and talk about this 11b3 thing, which is an invention of my friend Paco Vallejo, who played it recently in the Moscow Grand Prix against Hare Krishna. And shout out to Vallejo, who very often manages to come up with fresh moves in heavily analyzed positions. This is no exception. The move b3 did not occur to me when I did my series, and I don't think it's been played much. People always play queen c2, knight a3, queen a4, whatever. But b3 played by Vallejo, intending bishop to a3. Fresh idea here. And yeah, Mr. Passion, what I can tell you is that my computer says rook to d8 equalizes here. b takes c4, queen to d6, targeting this pawn. White is not really in time to defend it. If you go e3, I think e5 was good for black, so the best white has is something like bishop f4, queen takes d4, knight to a3, knight to e8, bit sad, but we gotta defend this pawn, and the game will eventually end peacefully after two, three more precise moves. Um, no, you got it from here, I'm sure. So yeah, b3, interesting move, probably more of a one game thing, and this rook d8, b takes c, queen to d6. Doesn't seem like the only solution, but it seems like the most reliable one. We'll get to the queen d2 position a little later, because it's somebody else's question as well. Or, no, maybe I'll do it here, and then refer to it later. Because, yeah, this is a line, or one of the lines that was not really a thing at the time I did my repertoire series for black. This position after knight e5. I gave c5 as an alternative, which I think is a little underrated, the c5 move. It's quite solid, but people never do it. Everybody plays knight c6 here. Knight takes c6, b takes c, and knight to a3. Kramnik was the first dude I saw play this against Bruzon, I believe, and then later there was this high-profile game. So against Nakamura as well. And yeah, there were a bunch of questions like what to do here and how to improve on Nakamura's play because Nakamura went on to lose that game. This is a weird position and I can sort of understand people not being that comfortable playing it. But I do believe that objectively Black is fine if he knows what he's doing. And currently Black is a pawn up, which is not the main feature of this position. But it does seem enough to hold the balance. White is not in a hurry to take his pawn back, but wants to put his queen here. And I'll keep it short, because what I will ask for is the improvement. I shall give you the improvement. This is what Nakamura played. Rook b6 was played later as well. Also seems to hold, if you ask me. Queen c8, nothing wrong with it, though. Um, a4, typical play. Turning bishop a3, put this bishop on this diagonal. Rook to d8, bishop to a3. And this position, if my memory serves Nakamura took on d4 and ended up in some hot water after rook fp1. This might still be fine, but it got very tricky. Instead of taking on d4, you can free your bishop with c3, trying to take here. At least that's what my computer was saying. Queen c3, bishop e2, rook fp1, bishop back to a6, and black's fine as far as I can tell. Rook b1, rook b6, trying to provoke a5, so we get this square for the bishop. Then the knight goes to d5. And yeah, complex position. White still, of course, has compensation, but no more than that, I believe. Black is perfectly fine here. That is our daily Catalan updates. No, man, I think there's more Catalan updates coming later, but I hope that helped. 
I understand this is all very fast and heavy theory. Watch the whole series, because I can't do the whole series here, just updating. Mm -hmm. Thomas R is chiming in on the Tarash or not Tarash discussion. And ah, yeah, this is about the question I answered earlier. About the timing of 7c5 is not so much if the bishop is on g5 or on f4, but the black has already played knight bd7. But yeah, it does seem to mainly be answering the question earlier. F. Bardamo is saying, Hello Jan, thanks for all the great material. My question is regarding the Kolle Zuckertort system. I know the system is supposed to be harmless, but I always seem to get in trouble and get outplayed, even by weaker players. For instance, after long line will put the position on the board, these are the positions I struggle with. I have developed all my pieces sensibly and the computer claims equality. In practice I find that it's harder to come up with a plan for black, while white has a much easier life, um, and so on and so forth. I disagree. Or, well, let's put it on the board. I, don't, I do disagree that white has a much easier life. The position you're giving in particular, I think black is doing excellently. So let's try to get there. In the what's called Kolle. D5, E3, C5. I think this is the move already you gave. Takes, takes. Knight C6, bishop here. First of all, from a theory standpoint, I would quit here. It seems obvious that black is fine. You get all your pieces out. You play E6, bishop D6. White is not pushing anywhere. His bishop is passive. So theoretically, I would be very comfortable if this was all I knew about this line. Bishop f5 or bishop g4, and black is fine. And let's get to the position. You mentioned after c4, rook c8. I'm, it's hard for me to put my finger on what's bothering you, because to my mind, black is doing very well here. You mentioned something like you are afraid of getting steamrolled on the queen side. You should not let that happen, but black has so much active play. For example, typical move in this position is to put the bishop here, Always keeping white very, very busy, thinking about bishop takes d2, followed by bishop takes f3, and are these pawns hanging or not? If white now goes c5, going for a long-term expansion, black goes knight e4, and the counterplay in the center and on the queen side, on the king side, in my opinion, very much outweighs white's play on the queen side. So I'd be very comfortable with this position, for example, where I think black is better. I understand a3 is not the only move, but whatever white does, it will have drawbacks, like rook c1, bishop f4 is even stronger, turning to play knight to e4, rook e1, rook e1 looks natural, somehow the computer says bishop b4 is very strong now, a3 takes, and oh, we're already grabbing material, I'm guessing, queen d2, knight a5, these dudes are hanging. So yeah, I don't want to bore you with my usual speech, chess, concrete game and so on, but this is really as good a position as you should expect to get out of the opening with black. Here, yeah, I think you've said all the right things. Pieces are out, black is fine, computer gives equality. What's not to like? Um, it very much depends on what white does, but I'd honestly choose black here in a heartbeat. If I was given the chance, do you want to play this position from here on with white or with black? I choose black every day of the week. So I do not share your concerns. It's hard for me to say, yeah, your plan is to go rook e8, bishop f8, g6, bishop g7. First of all, because it's not. Secondly, because it really depends. But yeah, if you're asking for a plan, go bishop f4, knight e4, then try to grab one of these pawns whenever possible. <clears throat> I'm not sure that answer satisfied you, but yeah, this position should not worry you that much. It's more about, it's really about playing chess which I'm trying to avoid by knowing as much theory as possible. But if you're comfortably equal with black, we have to, we have to live with that sometimes. Middle wave also chiming in on the big C4, C5 discussion. Like, it seems like half the questions are answers to that early question, but I've already addressed that, so I'll pass it by now. Padawan owns you saying, as you mentioned, correspondence games and the computer quite often. It would be nice if you could say something about these topics. Possible questions are, what are your sources for correspondence games? Can you recommend any? I'm not an expert on that topic. I have an 
a reasonably old database. I think it's called ICC F base, which I'm sure you can purchase. And I have a friend who was updating it for me with games from, I believe, from the ICCF, the Correspondence Federation website, you can download games and put them in there. But yeah, I'm not an expert on that topic, really. <clears throat> Which hard and software do you use? Yeah, it depends, whatever I can get my hands on. Normally, nowadays, people use remote engines a lot of the time. So sometimes you have some connection to some powerhouse engine somewhere. Some chess players have chosen to put some supercomputer in their basement and connect to it from their laptop when they're on the road. I don't have that. I don't have a supercomputer in my basement. But yeah, I used to have some construction that I can access a stronger machine online. As for the hard and software, I'm really not an expert on that topic. I know a bit about engines. I normally use Stockfish 8. Um, but I also like Houdini 5. I feel Stockfish 8 is a stronger player, but I like Houdini 5 because he has more opinions than Stockfish. And sometimes I can relate to his evaluation a bit more, but that's a matter of taste. Some people like Komodo. I don't know what to do with Komodo, but I do like, yeah, Stockfish 8 the best. And sometimes I want Houdini for a quote-unquote human opinion. Um, oh, there was one more question here. Do you use IDEA? I have no idea what that is, so I guess no. Fravatel is asking a long question. Hi Jan, I already asked this question, but here it might probably get more attention. I was wondering the following. I would like to make a relevant comment now. Um, we are talking about the Nemzo Indian line after 4e3, feature queen b3 in your main line, bishop c3, rook c3, h6. I believe he's quoting some analysis maybe from Kasparov books. Still have to figure out why that is. Um, bishop f6. In the game continuation, instead of bishop f6, Kasparov gives knight e5 as unpleasant for black after both takes mm, or rook c5. K Kasparov on Karpov part 3. Okay, let's put it on the board. I got the question. Mm -hmm. So this line, one of the Sorry. <laughs> See, I did it again. One of the main lines of the Nemzo Indian, the so called, I think it's called the Karpov variation, isn't it? DC followed by CD, ED, B6, which I believe is fine for black, and I gave as my main line against this in my video series on the Nemzo Indian. Rook e1, knight b7, rook c1, rook c8, queen to b3, and you are saying you. Don't trust my recommendation, bishop e7, because of knight e5, and you prefer bishop c3, rook c3, h6. And I disagree. I stick to what I said. The thing is, like a long time ago, the thinking was that this equalizes bishop c3, rook c3, h6, bishop h4, and queen e8 was supposed to be very subtle, planning to go bishop d5. However, here it turns out that white has this nasty move, queen to a3, attacking the pawn, and also making sure the bishops don't necessarily get exchanged. And after a6, what do they do? I think knight d2. White is supposed to be a little bit better as far as I know and am concerned. Bishop d5, you can go somewhere with the bishop, I can't recall if it was f1 or d3. But white is a little better because he avoids that exchange of bishops. And therefore, it turned out that the easiest way is actually to play bishop e7 when I've talked about bishop takes f6, the main line, in my series. But this move knight e5, I'm not sure. I probably didn't give it in my series. And Kasparov claims that after knight takes e5, white is better, which is true. But here you can make the quite but important move king to h8, stepping out of all kinds of knight takes f7, bishop e6 trickery. And after king h8, black is very fine, as long as I can tell, and more as long as I can see, and more importantly, as long as my computer can see. For example, rook cd1, black goes a6, intending to go b5, move the queen out of the way if necessary, or to play rook c7, queen a8, or to play queen c7. And it's very hard for white to improve his position. All the pieces are on decent squares, but it really doesn't go any further from here. And, well, white is not better. There's some lines here, which I'm sure you can figure out for yourself 
I'm mainly saying this because it's hard to analyze this position move by move since white has too many legal moves, bishop d3, whatever, a4, bishop f1, instead of rook cd1, I'm sure you can make a case for rook ed1 or bishop f1 here. But all you really need to know is play king h8, then go a6, and black is doing extremely well. Or extremely well is maybe a stretch. Black is comfortably equal. And I very much prefer this position to the one after bishop c3, followed by h6. I hope that answers your question. Hmm. Thrawn is saying, Hi Jan, thanks for your videos. I guess I learned something from them. Glad to hear that, Mr. Thrawn. Now to my question. In the trump with knight d2, you give only d takes c5, but a clubmate of mine plays c3 or e3 here and tries to follow up with a stone wall with a bishop out. For example, all right, let's put it on the board. And then he tries to checkmate me. And like you, I don't like being checkmated. Could you give an idea how to react to the stone wall with a bishop on g5? Cheers, Thrawn. I can give an idea and I kind of know the type. He doesn't really study any theory, that clubmate of yours, but he thinks he has reinvented the wheel because we all know in the stone wall, the bishop on c1 is a little passive. So he's thinking, I will put my bishop outside of the pawn chain. Then I will play the stone wall and I will crush everybody. Problem is, this really doesn't work in practice. I will go with, along with the line you mentioned and not even get hung up on stuff like queen b6 here, then good luck getting your stone wall because b2 and d4 are both hanging. Um, but let's say knight c6, c3, bishop f5. I would probably start with c, d, e, d and then play bishop f5 because I would be a little worried about dc5 here. But bishop f5, f4, that's the position you gave. Black is much better here already, believe it or not. C takes d4. I'm guessing his idea is e takes d4. And there are many ways to keep an advantage here with black. After knight e4, for example, this bishop looks very, very silly after takes, bishop takes, followed by f6. But the move I like best is the move queen to c7. <clears throat> Keeping an eye on the f4 pawn, Bishop takes f6 is not really a move because after gf, once again, black is seriously better. And this f4 pawn is a very sorry sight. So the natural move, I'm guessing, is knight to f3. And here we can start exploiting the holes in the white camp. Play knight to g4, threatening knight e3. And also threatening to grab the f4 pawn by h6, followed by queen takes f4. And your clubmate will probably be less happy with this bishop on g5 here. These plans, they can work if you, even here, if you play very passively, I think something like this, even this would be very double-edged because normally black gets some h6, g5 counterplay. But here, this can work. But to do it regardless of black's moves, especially if the bishop is out of the pawn chain already, it's just doesn't work. I hope I gave you a little material to crush your clubmate next time he tries that against you. Hmm. I throw rocks at blind kids. That's a cute username. He says, hi Jan, thank you so much for putting out the amazing content. Thank you. I just became premium and I'm completely amazed on what I've been missing out in the past couple of years. Yes, spread the word. The price is steel for all the content and broadcasts involved. This is not my alter ego. This is a real user, <laughs> I guess, who knows. My question is regarding the Vienna. All of your video series are very thorough. It is very difficult for me to remember opening theory. I have always played things like the classical Slav, where the play is dictated around ideas instead of concrete lines. Do you have any tips on how to memorize the lines? I can watch the video series over and over again, but when it comes to playing the lines over the board, I tend to forget important bits and pieces. And yeah, it's I understand. It's a common problem that I think everybody has to some extent and we should never forget our opponents have similar problems but I hear you and the thing with the Vienna it's more a matter of personal preference I normally enjoy playing forced lines which is a bit of a choice you often make with black in the opening if you play something sharp like the Vienna or the Grunfeld that relies on very much on move by move play then you have to pay the price and either try to find it over the board or to know these things in advance. 
Well, if you prefer to avoid it, you can play a line where the price of a move is not as high. Like you mentioned the classical Slav or here the analogy would probably be the Queen's Gambit declined, Bishop e7 followed by castles. And even though there's of course tons of theory to this one as well, it is not that hurtful to forget an individual move or not to find the correct move. As for memorizing techniques, I'm not an expert on the topic. Some people asked some questions about it earlier. I don't know. All I know is, yeah, I normally repeat stuff before the game. I click through my files and mm, hope for the best. But yeah, I am aware that in the Vienna, since it is a very sharp direct opening, memorization is more important than in some slower lines. And that's what comes with the ter territory. If you feel like, yeah, I just can't do it and it's not my style, then I would advise you to play bishop e7 or bishop b4 or knight bd7 in this position, which lead to slightly slower play. Even though, of course, remembering stuff is useful anywhere. But frankly, it's a topic that yeah, I haven't heard discussed that much around chess circles, which is important. Like, how do you remember certain lines? Because I agree it's a lot of information. And if you quiz me on my own video series, now, without looking it up, I wouldn't know the first thing about it. So yeah, the only thing I do is prepare for my opponents and go over the lines I consider relevant for that game. The morning before. So it's in my short-term memory. And then we kick it out of there again. It's like learning for an exam at school or university. And you delete that information after. But I'm not really an expert on the topic. What else do we have? Hmm... Mr. Zitter or Zitter says, Hi Jan, could you give some aggressive repertoire versus D4 as black? For example, some aggressive lines in the Grunfield. And um, no, sorry, that's not really my cup of tea. I've just finished my repertoire, which probably is not aggressive enough for you. But in the Grunfeld, none other than Peter Svidler, who I happen to be commentating Norway chess with life these days, and who happens to do a banter blitz if you're watching this live on June 9th, right after this show is over. He published an epic repertoire series on the Grunfeld. You can check that out. Or we also have a repertoire series by Robin van Kampen on the King's Indian, very sharp opening. Sopiko Guramishvili on the Triangle, reasonably sharp opening. So I'm sure you can find one of those there. But now I'm done with my 1D4 coverage for now. Like one day, if this Vienna thing gets too bad, I might have to update a bit on the Ragosi and things like that, but no. I'm sure someone else will be able to help you out there. Mm. Fravatel, I believe, is telling Zitter the same thing. So yeah, check out Peter's and Robin's stuff. Dragon Lore is saying, Hi Jan, love your content. Thank you so much, Bantablades opening series and opening clinic. Your two CB E4, E5 DVDs are also pure gold. Thank you. In your Vienna series, you mentioned there is a bishop f6 line that stopped you from recommending the Ragosin. Did I? Could you expand a little and give the full line that troubled you? Thanks. Um, what troubled me more was a combination of laziness and lack of forced lines or lack of knowledge, which made me lean towards the Vienna and not the Ragosi. We've addressed this earlier, or I keep addressing this. If things get get too bad here after Bishop B4, Bishop C4, then the Ragosi would be a logical backup option because after Bishop G5, which is one of the main modes, we can still play DC4 and transpose to 80% of our Vienna repertoire. And as for what I mentioned, I disliked. I honestly can't remember. I do know there's some Bishop F6 lines like. C, D, E, D, bishop, g5. If you go h6 here, then there is stuff like takes, takes, queen, a4 check, which, yeah, is a slow positional line. I'm not sure how much I dislike it. I think it's fine for black. And I'm not sure what I said. That's the bishop, f6 line I can think of now. Or maybe, maybe I said that bishop, g5, I would be happier to transpose back to the Vienna and not play this position. And I'm not sure, but that's not really my beef with the Ragosian. I think the Ragosian is a good line. I just, 
yeah, I'm not very much up to date on what's going on here after h6, bishop h4. We've had some developments, like in this very Norway chess, Levan Aronian played an interesting line with castles, e3, bishop f5 against Nakamura, that I'm sure will be worth studying a little further. Yu Yang Yi for a while and Peter Leiko have been playing similar things with h6, bishop h4, castles, and then bishop f5. That's very interesting. We also had a game in the queen a4, knight c6 check line. Was it yesterday? Aronian Giri, e3. How did it go? Queen c2, rook e8, something along those lines. So there is constant movement in the Ragozin, and yeah, maybe a bit of a hint that the top players trust the Ragozin more than the Vienna. Probably because of that dreaded pawn sacrifice. So yeah, I'm not sure that was the answer you were looking for, and I have no idea what, what line I said I disliked in the video series. As I said, not an expert on the memory thing. Hmm. Odell Checkham Jr. is saying, in your Nimzo series, you mentioned that after 4 queen c2, you could also play d5 and transpose to your main line after 5a3 if you like the positions after 5c takes d5. I was thinking of using this move order as I kind of like the sharp positions after cd e d. I just wanted to know how this line is currently holding up theoretically. And if I wanted to study it on my own, should I stick to the most popular moves in the database or are there certain, certain lines I should be aware of? Thanks, and I love all the video series. Thank you, Mr. Odell Checkham Jr. Um, yeah, honestly, I don't know that much. <laughs> That's why I decided to recommend castles instead of d5. So let me first explain what we're talking about. After queen c2, my repertoire is castles and a3, bishop c3, queen c3, d5. Now, if Black starts with d5 instead of castles. Then after a3, bishop c3, queen c3, castles obviously transposes to that position. And white has the bonus option of going c takes d5 here. While if black starts with castles, white has the bonus options of playing e4 or knight f3 in this position. Not very threatening, but still independent options. So you have to decide which bothers you more or which one you want more. Personally, yeah, I would think d5, cd5 is more work than the castles, knight f3 or e4, which is why I recommended castles. After cd, I had more of a soft spot for queen d5 than e d5, so honestly, I'm not very up to date here. I do recall covering this from the white side of the board in my white repertoire against the Nimzo, this stuff, and I'm not sure what has happened here since. I do believe that black is supposed to equalize with very careful play if he's no details in these sharp lines here. Rook c1 is one move, knight e2 is another, bishop e5 is another. Um, so yeah, it requires a lot of knowledge or a lot of calculation in sharp lines, which in this case I felt wasn't worth, didn't have enough upside. Therefore I went with castles. But as far as I know, d5 is still in good shape and the lines I just showed are playable. As for yeah, sticking with the most popular move in the database, I don't know, like, I normally don't look how many games were played and what. I'm pretty much a slave of the engine. Like, if the engine says this is good, then I'll normally give this more weight than how often it has been played in the database. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Where were we? Moriarty is saying, Hi Jan, I was wondering if you could answer a question about the Queen's Gambit Accepted that has puzzled me for some time. A bit outside of the scope of my video series, but I'll answer briefly because actually you're wondering about the move 7 knight c3, which transposes to Vienna lines, so it's not that much outside of the scope of it. And 7 knight c3 is not all that critical. Let's show what we're talking about. So you're asking about this position. And I'm talking about mm, this line. This is the Vienna. And magically, very similar. Bishop somewhere, followed by c5. But yeah, let's stick to your move order. Mm, if I manage to get back. 
not A3. We have a question about that later. Mm. Knight C3 is not considered to be critical here because the knight is often vulnerable to being chased by the B pawn. That's why in this position they play DC5 or B3 or Bishop B3, but seldom Knight C3. The correct answer is B5. And here, yeah, black has always been in good shape. Like, if white goes, let's say, bishop d3, you go bishop b7, put the knight on d7, get the pieces out. Whenever white plays a4, a typical move for these lines, black goes b4, this knight has to move again, which is not the case if you haven't put it on c3 yet. So b5 is the answer. There's been a bit of movement recently in this b5 bishop e2 line, intending after bishop b7 to go d takes c5. This, if I'm not mistaken, by a different move order, featured in the World Championship match, um, Kayakin versus Carlsen, where Carlsen, in this position, you can just take on d1 and take on c5, which looks fairly equal to me, but Carlsen played the sharper move knight to c6, intending queen takes d8, rook takes d8, and then to take back on c5 at his own accord, which also seemed like an interesting idea. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question, more or less. Check the clock. We have half an hour before the P Peter Swidler shall occupy the studio and set up his Bantablist show. But I believe th that, yeah, at least from the question I've seen, questions I've seen in advance, we will get to most of them, or probably all of them. What is this? Dr. Boki's question appearing twice. Let's see. Dr. Boki is saying, magnificent series, really great work. Thank you, Dr. Boki. My question is in the main line with Catalan, with Queen C2 and A4 and 10 Bishop G5. Do you still think 10 bishop d5 is the best? That's now the main line where there's been quite a bit of movement. So let's get to it. There were some high level games in the line queen c2, bishop e4, and now queen c1 and 12 queen d1. Thank you. Well aware. And yeah, I, I would stick with my repertoire, but of course it has to be updated a bit, as always when there's top players games. One should pay attention and see what changed. Now we're talking about queen c2, always the main line in this position, a6, a4, bishop d7, queen c4, bishop c6, bishop g5. And yeah, bishop d5 is what I gave, still think that is best. Queen c2, queen d3 is the alternative, but queen c2 has been popular recently. Bishop e4, and here either queen d1 or queen c1. Against queen d1, I'm not sure, I can't remember my series as usual. One thing that I'm not no longer sure about, I think in my series I might have given h6, which is playable, h6, and then I want some bishop to h7 thing. There I've seen, I think Nakamura lost a game, not in this exact position, but with his bishop on h7. That made me doubt that idea a little. I don't think it's refuted, but I believe in against queen d1, c5, d takes c5. This is also a game, Nakamura Vichy, maybe. Here h6 seemed to equalize quite comfortably for black. Of course it continues, but I believe this is fine. Um, well, after queen c1, now c5 is not so easily done. So you go h6, takes, takes. There was, I think here was this game, or was it Elyanov, Nakamura, Elyanov? Yeah, Elyanov, Nakamura. Was it knight bd2? I'm not sure about the move order, but just the general notion. I thought, here bishop h7, even though the comp likes this. I'm not sure if this is the game, but that felt dangerous for black, what happened there. So I more or less decided that... I'm sorry, I'm unsure about the move order. But I think I decided somewhere here that black should take on f3 and not bother with bishop f7 and play these positions, which still strike me as very, very solid. Go knight a6, knight b4. I'm guessing after knight... After knight, the immediate knight d2. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I confused myself here. Because here takes looks a little different or not? Oh no, it's the same thing. Bishop takes f3, we have c6. This pawn is hanging, so if white covers it, we go a5, knight a6. And these positions, some people play these for white, but I still believe that black is extremely solid here and wouldn't be too concerned about it. So I hope that answers your question. Sorry about my confusion, but I stand by the line. Shaba is wondering, do you think d4, d5, 2, r3? Arguing that a6 is useful for black in so many lines that white can't be worse after it. Shaba, you know yourself that a3 is a ridiculous move. That's why you're already 
providing justifications for it, aren't you? Or its various other incarnations are worth preparing for. No, I don't think 2A3 is worth preparing for. And if not, still, what would you do against it? Yeah, you saw that answer coming. First of all, um, in my repertoire, which we're talking about in this video, I would not go d4, d5, but go d4, knight f6. When after a3, as much as I love going d5 against everything, I might be tempted to play a move like g6 and asking, is a3 that useful for you? But still, let's stick with it. So d5, or in your move order, d4, d5, a3. I would go knight to f6, probably develop a knight, which seems more useful than moving the a-pawn. And after knight to f3, you can do whatever you like. And you can play bishop f5, which looks fine. You can also play c5. c5 normally works even against moves like a3, where it looks like takes is scary, followed by b4, and white has this pretty pawn chain. But you can't keep it even here. You go a5, and after c3, this typical undermining mechanism still works. Takes takes, b6, cb, bishop takes, b4, check. As long as black doesn't have a knight on c6, this mechanism to get the pawn back pretty much always works in this order. Bishop b2 takes, 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 b6 as well. So I would not be bluffed by this a3 and still play c5. And if you want to play e3 here and say I have the powerful, useful move a3 already made, then more power to you. But yeah, such a position, I don't know. I don't think black could ever be worse. It's similar to what we talked about earlier. Get the bishop out, play some chess. But yeah, if 2a3 is the biggest worry you have in your repertoire, then your repertoire is in pretty good shape. DangerMao5 is asking, I hope I'm not too off topic asking about the queen's gamut declined. You kind of are. You said you had been considering it instead of the Nimzo until Hammer's famous improvement for white in the exchange variation. Yep, I have talked about that in great detail in most of my shows, so I'm not going to repeat it here. I suppose d4, d5, c4, e6, knight, c3, bishop e7 was not an option for you because you play the Vienna. But do you consider it better than knight f6 for a queen's gamut declined player at the moment? Thanks. Mm, so Danger Mao is basically saying, I know you don't like to eat tuna, ice, and liver. But if you had to choose, would you eat the liver or the tuna ice? It's more of a would you rather. Um, yeah, let's briefly put it on the board. So in this position, he's asking bishop e7 or knight f6, which is really too broad a question. Like, I'm pretty sure Danger Mao is aware of the options after both bishop e7 and knight f6. The big drawback bishop e7 has is that after knight f3, knight f6, you're committed to playing the queen's gamut decline with the bishop on e7, and you have to deal with all the bishop f4s, bishop g5s, queen c2s, and so on and so forth. Bishop e7 also allows c, d, e, d, bishop f4, knight f6, e3, which, yeah, is always a topical line, or c6, e3, where I believe white has decent chances to play for an opening advantage as well. So, yeah, I'm not very big on bishop e7, even though, of course, it's a playable move. Knight f6, yeah, we've talked about why I gave up this as part of my black repertoire plan. Not a fan anymore. Cd. And if you want to play knight d5 here, then, yeah, I'm with you. The semi tarash is in decent shape. Kramnik does this on a regular basis after losing the game with ed5 against Carlsen. He pretty much switched to knight d5, and he's defending that. Not my cup of tea, but very playable, the semi tarash The big advantage knight f6 has after knight f3, as much as I've been whining about the Vienna today, in the position after knight f6, knight f3, you still keep all your options open. You can play this, 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 or you can play this. Maybe I even forgot a sensible move. Oh, nowadays I play a6 a lot too. Shaba, I'm sure, would like the move a6. Well, if you play bishop e7, you have none of these options. I mean, bishop e7 and move earlier. So I'm sure you know all that. Um, and yeah, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. If I had to choose what would I play here, I would play knight f6, c takes d5, knight takes d5. Because I dislike most versions of the Carlsbad structure here without the white knight on f3. Yet. <laughs> Heisenberg23, another feeder master is saying, hello Jan, I've studied your full repertoire against 1d4 and I really like it. Congrats for your great job. Thank you, Heisenberg. 
Is there any line where you have discovered something important or you have changed your opinion since you recorded the videos and you have not updated yet? Some, something like you did about 4b6 in your Quincy 2 series against the Nimzo. This was my white series, just to clarify. Um, no, not really. I think we've talked about most of it already. You guys did a good job of hitting like the critical spots and Heisenberg is also pointing it out. In my opinion, the most challenging line in all the repertoire is six ta bishop takes c4 in the Vienna. Do you agree? I do agree. I uh, still find playing 14 c5 in what is the most challenging line? 14 rook e1. I'm not sure if 14 rook e1, yeah, maybe it is the most challenging. It's hard to say. It's, yeah, the whole ter territory is a bit murky. But yeah, I have very, I can't remember what I said in the video as usual, but I have very little to add. I don't think I've changed my opinions on any of that stuff really, apart from the general uneasy feeling. So we're talking about this, um, sorry, no, rook e1 here, the main line, f5, queen f3 here, king h8, and earlier we briefly looked at bishop f4. There's also the move rook e1 here, because bishop f4 is met by g5. Well, if you start with rook e1, g5 doesn't make so much sense. Now black goes bishop d6, the difference is if after bishop f4, bishop d6, then white goes rook e3, doubles rooks on the e5, which is unpleasant. So rook e1 has its drawbacks too. But yeah, as for this position, I believe I mentioned that c5 seems playable here, but it's quite scary because it opens a position for white's more active pieces. I have not refuted c5, but I also haven't spent many hours analyzing it since the series. And yeah, the <clears throat> main line I guess I gave is something, I can't remember what I gave, honestly is this bishop d6, bishop f4, takes, takes. And here after queen d6, this led to what a rook end game where black should draw, but he still has to be quite precise. I'm guessing I did mention that in the series. While another move is rook to e8, keeping this pawn alive. It's a little passive, but playable. But yeah. This is just me trying to remember what I recommended in the series. I don't have any updates or new information for you there, Mr. Heisenberg, but I do agree that this is the most critical spot of it. And if it's too critical, switch to the Ragozin, stick to the Vienna parts after Bishop G5, as mentioned. <clears throat> Carlsen Superlight. Oh, since I keep talking about that line, I should mention one other thing. In this position, I haven't really checked it yet, but if we're desperate enough, we can start looking at this. Black is two pawns up after all. I never took this seriously because it just looks so scary. But I saw, I think, Hertneck played it in the Bundesliga against Shirov and got sort of a playable position. I still have a hard time believing this will hold up to scrutiny. But yeah, just <laughs> on a closing desperate note on this bishop c4 business. Mm. Carlson Superlight is saying, I am a 1400 USCF rated player and was thinking of becoming a mainline D4 player from playing the English. Is that a good idea? Thanks, Jan. Um, yeah, go for it. I'm always, I've always been a fan of playing mainlines, even early in your chess career. <clears throat> so, yeah, by all means, go for it. Some people would say that openings are not the biggest concern, but I've always been concerned with openings, no matter what my rating was. And I believe looking at D4 mainlines will probably improve your chess, so by all means. Sutek002 says, Hi Jan, I've watched most of your episodes on how to meet the D4 sidelines and have found it to be excellent. Like all your work on Chess24, thank you Sutek002. In order to achieve good results against such sidelines, to what extent do you think a change in mindset is required? i.e. while sidelines such as the London may not be as critical as 2c4, they're respectable and must be taken seriously rather than being dismissed or as boring or as giving black easy quality with preparation. Yeah, in general, I'm not a big mindset guy. I'm more of a move per move guy, so I'm not an expert on the topic, but especially the London nowadays has pretty much mainline status. All the top players are playing it, so that one is to be taken very seriously. The Trompovsky I've also always taken seriously because yeah, it's a logical move. D4, knight f6, bishop g5, then some of the others may be less serious, but I believe with the stuff I gave, you're 
you'll be well enough equipped to meet them. Um, yeah, it's less critical than, for example, the Vienna with bishop c4 that I keep talking about. But those are serious lines, and you better be aware of them, especially the London, because everybody's, of course, following people's lead. Oh my god, I can play d4, bishop f4, and I don't have to know so much. Let's do it. But yeah, as for the mindset, I don't know, just... It's probably the best mindset to always take whatever your opponents do seriously and take it from there. Then, of course, how could we have an opening clinic without a question by Pramod NVS? Um, I'm always intrigued how Pramod, Pramod's mind works. I, as usual, will not be able to give him any good advice, but gotta appreciate that he keeps coming back like the Terminator. So, Pramod NVS, hello Jan, hope you're having a great commentary stint during the Norway chess tournament. Hope so too. Always a pleasure to have Peter Svidler around. Among the four parts, I like the one against the Catalan the most. All right, who wouldn't love being black against the Catalan? So I would like to transpose to the Catalan with black, giving this option to white. It's sort of a white decision though. I see that most of the time opponents reject it by playing d4, knight f6, knight f3, d5. g3, e6, bishop g2, bishop e7, castle, castle. And then they play all sorts of stuff with b3, bishop b2, knight bd2, knight e5, etc. Going for c4 and e4. Sometimes bishop f4, c3, knight bd2, knight e5, and then e4. It's like a clockwork setup for them. Will you please recommend me a line other than that early c5 you recommend in your video series so that I can go for the Catalan? Um, oh boy, where, where to begin? So, first of all, the Catalan is something white can do, not something black can really go for. It's part of our repertoire, but you can't force them into it. But you're saying that you're comfortable with all this stuff from the black perspective after bishop e7. And therefore, in the sideline that no one ever plays, d4, knight f6, knight f3, d5, g3, you refuse to play the move I recommend in my video series c5, which gives easy equality if you know a few things. And you want to play e6, trying to transpose into the Catalan. So far, so good. Um, yeah. Knock yourself out. And then your question is that after bishop g2, bishop e7, castles, castles, you are afraid that people don't play the main move here, c4. I play knight b2, b3, bishop f4, and you run into legions of chess players that are playing this move order that no one ever plays with g3, because here black can play bishop f5 or c5, that all do that in order to trick you into that position, and then they have it down to a science. How to... I, I forgot what to do here. How to play b3, bishop b2, knight bd2, knight e5, e4. And I don't know what... What to tell you? In this position, if white doesn't go c4, but knight b2 or b3, you go c5 against everything and you're fine. c5 followed by knight c6. That's why, in my opinion, c4 is the most critical move once we make it here. Because then black can't go c5 so easily. So against knight b2 or b3 or bishop f4, you should play c5 with a decent position. If you don't want that, you can... I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I would play c5 here. Maybe you can play b5 too, if you feel like it. Might be possible, trying to play bishop b7. But yeah, to begin with, no one ever does this, and I don't believe this happens to you a lot. Where it could happen is something we discussed earlier. After knight of three, d5, g3, this is a much more serious move order, Knight f6, bishop g2, if you decide to play e6 here, castles, bishop e7. Here people could think about going d4, followed by not c4, um, or b3, which is more relevant. But, yeah, as usual, I am not sure I share your concerns there. And if you got this position after knight f3, d5, d4, knight f6, I would go c5. That's why I made a whole video on it. Anyway, hope that helped you, Pramod NVS. IR Baboon, 
says Jan, I'm in peril. Oh. In the Norway chess blitz, Carlsen butchered Caruana with d4, knight f6, bishop f4, d5, knight c3, a6, e3, e6, g4. What to do against this nonsense? Then, yeah, follow my series. Don't have to go there. You can start with c5, or let's say, yeah, c5, e3, a6 is what I gave in the series. Here. <clears throat> Instead of, sorry, knight c3, a6, e3, this is what you're mentioning, g4. First of all, I don't think this line is the end of chess. It's just a cute idea that Carlsen felt like playing in a blitz game. I'd be surprised if he does this in a tournament game. But yeah, if you followed the repertoire I'm recommending, you don't have to deal with it because after c5, e3, a6, we're still covering the g4 square. And none of this nonsense shall ever happen to you. Thanks for pointing out the game though. <laughs> Shaba is asking, didn't you have a question already, Shaba? Good for you, I can't remember a single thing. Do you think that d4, knight f6, bishop f4, d6, shutting the bishop is technically superior to, to d5? No, I do not. That's why I recommend it to d5. Mm -hmm. F. Bardamu is asking, Hello Jan, I hope you don't mind me asking a second question. I sort of do mind, because people will complain since we said everyone should I only get one question, even though, yeah, in some spots I'm aware. I've answered two questions in one. I'll address it very briefly, because I think you caught me here, F. Bardamo, d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, e3, castles, bishop d3, c5, knight e2, d5. What do you recommend after a3? Um, I don't know. I think this might be one point that I missed in the Nimzo series. I don't think it's a huge problem necessarily, but I did not really address this. As usual, I can't quite remember, but I only recall talking about c takes d5 and castles here, not about a3. I guess what you should do is, mm, sorry, and take here, and knight c3 I think is considered to be harmless, you just take everything, go knight c6, then b6, bishop b7, knight e7, while bc3, I can't spot anything better off the top of my head, because I haven't looked at this much, and taking here and going queen c7, which I believe transposes to a line I've seen via different movers. As far as I know, black is supposed to be fine here, but I think I should have addressed it. And my memory is spotty, but yeah, I have a feeling I might have missed this in the series, so thanks for pointing that out. However, I do believe that black is fine here. b6, put the bishop on a6, go knight c6, go for e5. Black is supposed to be doing all right in this line, as far as I know but I should totally have mentioned it if I haven't. My apologies. Heike12 says, Hi Jan, two short questions. Is the King's Indian defense playable on top level? Sure is. Why isn't the King's Indian that popular? Because it's very, very risky strategically and it you can never equalize in the King's Indian. You might win once in a while, but you have to cover a lot of ground and take a lot of risks. But I'm sure there are still people. There are still soldiers of the King's Indian out there and Ding Liren, doesn't he play the King's Indian quite regularly? Rajabov used to play it regularly. Kasparov, of course, in the old days. But yeah, it's very committal opening. Penguin Du is saying, Jan, what is your opinion on the following line? Not mentioned in your most recent video. D4, knight f6, knight f3, d5, bishop f4, c5, e3, knight c6, c3, queen b6, knight a3. Actually, Penguin Du has done all the work here for me. He gives the main line what Stockfish 8 spits out, queen b2, knight b5, knight e4, and so on. I'll put it on the board. And then he says 6a6, queen b3, also playable, or he dislikes. So mainly, thanks for the update. I should have put it in the video. I have seen this move, but I knew it wasn't very good. So it kind of got edited out. But yeah, we're talking about queen b6, knight to a3. And I agree with everything you're saying. You can play the main line, queen takes b2, knight b5, knight e4. Threatening checkmate here. And after bishop g3, give the queen c4, rook to b1, queen b5, rook b5, knight c3. What do you say here? Or it doesn't matter. Queen b2, knight d6. And you say you're not sure you'd be comfortable with this position? 
I'd be extremely comfortable with this position with black. With this pass pawn, this monster on the d4, on the c4 square, I'd be very, very happy. But yeah, if you're not, I think you should be. This would be my choice. If you're not, then I believe the a6 move, which you also mentioned, is also perfectly fine. The point being that after knight a3, a6, you give queen b3, which makes sense, hitting the queen on b b6. But the knight on a3 is really dumb as well after a6. So here we can just go back and say, you know what, congratulations on having played knight a3 and queen b3. Enjoy it while it lasts. I can't see a good move here for white. Well, black seems to be in pretty decent shape, just expanding. So yeah, I think both of your, the lines you are giving are perfectly fine for black and apologies for not having knight a3 in the videos. I believe queen b2 is the refutation. If I start speaking more quickly, it's because we're running out of time. Um, far away from hell, I believe this is the same question I addressed earlier in Passion's question here, yeah, the 9a3, knight a3 line, so versus Nakamura. Far away from hell is also telling Pramo that he can try 5b5. Yeah, I mentioned that option, right? <laughs> or a chess is saying in your repertoire against the London system, you give d4, knight f6, bishop f4, d5, e3, and knight f3, you give c5 as the main line. After that, white can take that pawn. So I ask myself, why not to play e6 against e6, against both moves, so that I don't have to know how to get enough compensation for the pawn, or to know how you get the pawn right back. So what is the difference between your lines and the move 3, e6? I guess that without c5, it's not possible to transpose to your other lines but I might be very wrong. And I think you're making a good point here, as much as I hate to admit that. I hadn't thought of that, but you're, you have a point. Because after d5, e3, my repertoire is c5, and I stand by everything I said, but the move dc5 is a fairly serious move in this position, which I covered in a separate video. And after c5, the main line, c3, knight c6, knight d2, my main repertoire, was e6 in this position. Of course, if you don't want to play e6, but you want to play bishop f5 or cd followed by bishop f5, then e6 is not for you. But I thought about this a bit, and after e6, in most of the lines, as far as I can tell, it should be possible to transpose back into our repertoire while you sort of skipped the dc5 thing, even though I don't think it's worth skipping. The one independent option that white has here is he could play c4 in this position, which against c5 instead of e6 does not make a whole lot of sense. So you would have to weigh those against each other. <clears throat> white can go c4, maybe some, some of like knight c3, but that doesn't look very scary. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe you can also try to do without c3 here, play something like that. But none of this scares me unduly. So starting with e6, I believe will get you transposed to the repertoire most of the time. I, I would still start with c5 because the downside of having to deal with dc5 is not as big for me as having to deal with c4 or knight f3 and so on. But I do think you're not wrong and you can start with e6 here if you so choose to. <clears throat> Themistocles, not a premium member, is writing in German. He's saying, <clears throat> all parts interesting. Why are there no ebooks for part one and four? Because I've done them. I will probably do, or we will probably publish an ebook for part four. Probably not for part one. You're going to have to watch the videos. A Spectre is saying, or not. A Spectre is saying, I have a question to this line. D4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5, bishop f4. I'm sorry, that's too far outside of the scope of what this opening clinic special is meant to be about. Please check out Peter Svidler's video series on the Grunfeld, where bishop f4 is a reasonably main line. Do whatever he says. Fravatel is pointing out, in some lines you want to keep bishop f5 in reserve as an option. As an option, that's true, but I do go e6 most of the main lines, so not necessarily. Now, these questions have been edit before I saw them. So last questions here from Eve M and Vonky. Mm, I'll put it on the board. I have not looked at those, but I will 
improvise. D4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, what was it? e3, castles, bishop d3, c5, knight f3, d5, c, d, e, d, d, c. In general, this is considered to be harmless because of knight b7, which I think I mentioned in the series. So I'm not quite sure what your point is, but probably I should wait before getting into it more. Um, I have very little to add to what I said. In the game he played castles and replied to knight c5 with knight e2. The game ended in a draw, but it seemed white had a much more comfortable game. I disagree. I thought black was fine there, and I did give some more details, which of course I can't remember now in the series, but I do, did think that black was fine. Um, so yeah, I have little to add there to what I said earlier. Generally, the thinking is that if black can go knight d7 and take on c5 here, that is in decent shape. So knight e2, I can't remember anything off the top of my head. Did they play this? I would probably take the bishop. Is this what happened? Honestly, I can't remember, but whatever I said, I still agree with me. Here, off the top of my head, I would grab the bishop. One point that is interesting, though, about this is after short castles, for years, knight c6 was called the tabia. and was considered to be a very playable mainline for black. Here, I think that you are right, and after c, d, e, d, d, c, white is indeed better, because we no longer have this knight d7, followed by knight c5 option. And this, after bishop c5, I think they go h3 and then b3. This is pleasant for white. But to do one move earlier, I still think that knight b7 is perfectly fine. All right, last question for today. Mr. Vonky is saying, Hello, Jan. Can Grunfeld King's Indian players play system that you have recommended against London system? Is there any chance black, white can trick black into some Nimzo or Vienna lines? No, I don't think you have to be very concerned about that because the bishop is already on f4. That's the London system. And now that is a pretty closed repertoire there after d5, c5. You can't get tricked into any Nimzo or Vienna lines because that'd be a horrible thing. No, it won't happen. You can play what I gave, even though as a Grunfeld or King's Indian player, you might feel more comfortable in g6 territories generally because you're more used to having the bishop here. But there is nothing wrong with following my repertoire, which I think yeah, is the way to play this. d5, c5, knight, c6. So no, you can't be tricked, I promise. Mm -hmm. That brings us to the end of today's show, I hope. That we all learned a little something and that I gave you guys an update on the state of the video series. Excellent questions by most of you, like leading theory forward. So thank you very much for that. I hope, yeah, this series helped you guys to update or to clarify some blank spots. For those of you who haven't seen the video series yet, by all means, do it or use it in specific spots to prepare for opponents who might do this and that. Thanks for all the praise. I'm glad you guys liked it. Um, what else can I tell you? Not much really. Stick around because in half an hour Peter Svidler will play Banter Blitz to those of you watching live. Other than that, for those of you watching Half-Life on Saturday, is it Saturday tomorrow? I think it's Saturday. Saturday the 10th and Sunday the 11th. We will be back here in the studio, Peter Svidler and yours truly, to cover Norway chess round. Which rounds are they? Four and five. Looking forward to that. Should be a lot of fun. Thank you guys for bearing with me, even though I'm blocking the opening clinic. Uh, and I'm out, handing over to Mr. Svidler.